it. He didn't ask you to pray for the water that you drink. He didn't ask you to pray for the gas. If he has requested you to pay for gas, some of us by now will have been slaves forever. Can you lift your hands to heaven? Be intentional about your hand up. Hallelujah. Just be intentional. Lift up the hands to heaven and give him praise this morning. To you be the glory, honor, adoration. Thank you, Father. Mighty name we are praying. Lift your hands one minute and rejoice in the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? Rejoice in the Holy Ghost. One more time, rejoice in the Holy Ghost. PICC, that is not how to go ahead. Hallelujah. You see, I have issues when we come into the presence of God like this. And people becomes very what we call it spiritually adamant or they get too spiritually carried away when people get to church I have issues personally with people who come to church who cannot jump who cannot move who cannot dance who cannot raise their hands who cannot who does not follow protocol spiritual protocols I have issues with them because they are the kind of people who bring lukewarmness to an atmosphere? If you have 10 of them in an atmosphere, they kill the spirit in that place. But we are not of lukewarm people. We are living soul and quickness spirit. Go ahead and rejoice! Look at the person by your side and tell the person you look good. You smell nice. You look like a king. You look like a prince. Please be seated. Clap your hands and be seated. You can sit. Yeah, please, as soon as the service, someone starts, I tell them nobody walks in front of the altar. Everybody should sit down wherever they are. And the ushers should ensure that that protocol is strictly observed. Hallelujah. This service today is divided into two parts. The first part is going to be an introduction where I will lay foundations of what you will hear in the second service. The second service has a lot of things you need to learn. So you might need to write because the second service you need to write down a lot of things. But the first service I will lay foundations. If you are in this first service and God give you grace to partake in the second service, then you have a full understanding of the sermon. Because in the second service, they will not lay the kind of foundation that I want to lay. I want to show you why you act the way you are. I want to show you why you think the way you think. I want to show you from scriptures and from social point of view, why you cannot keep friends. Why you cannot keep relationship. You see, we have spiritualized many things that are supposed to be things to understand. Not everything has demon. Not everything has Satan. You know, sometimes they used to blame us in Africa, especially when you travel abroad. When you travel to countries like UK, US, um, Canada, Israel, um, Canada, Italy, Spain, and all those things, you discover that most of your prayer points are not relevant. I'm telling you, most of the prayer points that you are praying now, when you get to those countries, they are not relevant. Not because there are no spirit or demons in that place, but because they have a different mindset, a different understanding, a different complete mindset entirely. So we want to prepare you for the journey ahead. And that is why you should be grateful and glad that you are in a ministry like this. A ministry that brings balance to the scripture, balance to the word, balance to the gospel. Genesis 1, 26. The Bible says, God said, let us make man in image. Genesis 1, 26 and Genesis chapter 2, 7. Let me quickly do an illustration before I now lay foundation. Three of you come, and three of you come. I'll just do that illustration so that you have understanding. Those in first service cannot understand that. Um, you may come. 
Man, that is you. You are man. Man is a spirit. Someone say, I'm a spirit. Man is a spirit. You are a spirit because you exist in somewhere before you came to this world. So man is a spirit. So you understand like this, face the altar. The spirit, which is the spirit man, has a soul. This is the soul of man. Has a soul. And the spirit that has a soul is kept inside a body. Come, Mona. It's kept inside a body. This is the body. Look at this body is what we call earth suit. You see, this skin is called earth suit. It's called what? Suit. You know when you wear coat, like what I'm wearing now. You know this is not me. So the way I wore this suit, like you can wear a red coat, a parachute, whatever you are wearing, is an earth suit. So we call it suit from the earth. The ground, the soil, suit from earth. So that's called earth suit. So we all are wearing earth suit. But this earth suit is not us. The us is spirit. What is talking in you is a spirit. What is talking in you is not your earth suit. So this is the earth suit. This spirit that has a soul. Now, spirit, spirit cannot function without a soul. Spirit cannot do anything without a soul. You can imagine, I don't know if you can see a ghost on the street of Elijah walking like this. So, what are you doing? I'm a ghost. Where are you coming from? I'm coming from Love Lagos. Can you see a spirit like that? A ghost. You know those things you see in African magic and all those things? They are not, they are not real. So you, you can imagine you come out in the morning and you see one small, you know, and we coming out in the morning and he's doing like this. Turu say, where are you coming? I say, I'm coming from the um, Miracle Estate. You want to question the spirit like, so spirit doesn't move around. When the spirit moves, it's because the spirit has a soul and is kept in an earth suit called body. Is that clear? The soul, the spirit has characteristics. The body, the soul has characteristics. The body has characteristics. Now, this spirit, what can what makes this spirit function on earth is because of the soul. What is talking inside of me is a spirit powered by the soul. Now, you see, this soul has three compartments. Now, three of you come. So, I'll just finish this foundation. This soul has three things. Number one, stand like this. Mind. Someone say mind. Two. Say we. Three. Say emotions. Is it clear? Any clarity? The soul is made up of three things. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. Let me not use it as emotions. Uh, so emotions are fe feminine. So the soul is made up of mind, will, uh, willers. <laughs> it's a will, it's a mind, mind, will, and emotions. You see, this mind, will, and emotions in Revelations chapter 4, in verse 11, the Bible says, God created us for his pleasure. The pleasure means he created varieties of us for different purposes. You know, you can imagine me having different games, toys in my house. Guys, you have PS4, PS5, like what? What are, what are the games? Mortal Kombat, you want all those things? Right? Different for pleasure. You know, when you are tired of this, you move into this. When you are tired of that, the way, same way God created man for his pleasure. In that varieties of the creation of God, which is the pleasure, he created those differently. If God had created all of us the same, this world would have been boring. You can imagine all of us strong face. All of us. If I imagine if all of us were to be comedian. I just woke up in the morning and got my cat jokes, Pastor. Because I'm a comedian, he's a comedian. The, the world, we will not be serious. There will be no serious people. Even when somebody dies, you'll be cracking jokes and barrier. 
when there's a serious matter, fire is burning. Somebody will say, even in this fire, say, I mean, like Elijah, walk upon the fire. You can crack joke with fire. And have you seen people like that? This is test. Case hard. There's a serious case. But everybody's hard. But this guy is cracking joke in the midst of hardness. Have you seen people like that? And you'll be wondering, guy, what is wrong with you? Can't you see there's a trouble? Even in the trouble, the guy is cracking jokes. You see, that thing, you are the one that thing. this guy is not, he's the way God created him. He's part of the varieties. And have you seen people, they will go to a comedy show and they will never laugh. That is why the comedians say, if you don't laugh at my joke, the problem is not that my joke is not funny. It's because your problem is bigger than mine. So, they can say, if that's your problem. So, some will go to, have you seen some people that, they will, they will be, they will bow their face and say, boy, laugh, laugh, because you're not laugh. You're the one that thinks he doesn't laugh. It's the way he's created. So we call it template. Somebody said template. I'll soon release you guys. I'll soon release you. It's called template. Template of creation. In all creature is a template. So, you know, most of you do graphics. There's something called template. It's called background of your graphics so that template is what we now build upon so god gave all of us templates that template is what is called temperament temperament is the template of creation in man template of god creation now in this that is the temperament is not trapped in the mind it's not trapped in the will it's trapped in the emotion so in this emotion is what is called template that is where temperament is so this emotion which is mrs emotion has several templates so one of the templates is that she has strength and she has weakness in that emotion so i'll release you people let me allow her to stay clap for them she has strength and she has weakness which is in that template so in trapped in your soul is your mind is your will is your emotion and in your emotion is trapped the template of strength and template of weakness why must we learn i think i will release you i'll come back to you later why must we know the template of our emotions so that you can't know how to relate with people so that you can know your strength as an individual so that you can know your weakness and so that you can know your kind of a partner that you will end up with there's difference between temperament and character so let me do another illustration again. I need um, Yemi and um, Chemicum. Temperament and character. Because the problem many of us have is that you mistaking character for temperament and mistaking temperament for character. So temperament, like I told you, is the template of creation of God entrapped in an emotion of man. Everybody has an emotion, and that emotion has a template, which is called temperament. But you see, character is who you are. Temperament is not who you are. Temperament is, is trapped in your template. It's like, it's, it's, it's trapped in your template, which has your strength, which has your weakness, and there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do to work on that template unless two things come in. Number one, the word of God. Number two, the Holy Spirit, which will look at the spirit control. How the spirit can help you control the weakness and turn them into strength. So, the char your character is who you are. Your character is what you are. But your character can be influenced by several things let me tell you several things that can influence your character 
For instance, your character can be influenced by the kind of parents that brought you. For instance, there are some of us who our parents were very harsh on us. Have you, have you, have you, have you, have you your, your parents flogged you before? If you are here, you have been flogged by your parents when you were young. Lift your hands up. My father is a radionic. And you know, radionic has different wires, TV, um, iron wire. He stored them in different categories. I, I was telling one of my daughter who came back home with a result and I just feel she can do, come back, do me better. I said, if I have a result and I'm not between first and fifth, I shouldn't come home. If I'm not between first and fifth, as I'm coming home, I'm reporting to the shop of my father. And as I'm, I know where to lie down. He doesn't need to tell me. I'll just go and lie down there. He doesn't, you don't need to say, lie down. Mm -mm, I know. I will just lie down there. Then the man, has, he would take, it's not cane, it's wire, iron wire. What? That's the kind of a father that raised me. So you can imagine me growing in that kind of hostility. It affects my character. So when I grow up, I become ash. I become aggressive. That's why some people you are wondering, why are you ash? You know, I also told some people that, for instance, my wife came from a family where they love themselves. Everybody loved themselves. If this one is having party, all of them will go. If that one having party, all of them will go. If this one is having party, all of them will go. Me, I came from a family where we don't celebrate. Is it where you is it not where you celebrate that you attend? Where there's no celebration. So we don't even know what is celebration. We don't know anything. And if we just celebrate, you're on your own. We will not attend. Because in the family, we believe this family is evil. That family is wicked. This family, if you attend their party, they will poison all of us. So we grew, we were poisoned. In our family, my mother, they would tell me, don't attend if that sister is coming. If they give you bread, if you collect it. As the person is going like this, pack the bread, throw it away. I'm, I'm be honest. I'm not going to that kind of. Be, are you honest? I want to be honest with you today. What I'm sharing with you are things that we have exposed ourselves to. That kind of atmosphere, attitude that you grow up. If God doesn't help you and the Holy Spirit doesn't help you, you will train your children like that. So those things shape us our character. Another thing that shape us our character is the school you go to. <laughs> my children goes to one school, very big school, and then I move them to go and do lesson in another school. This second school they are doing lesson is now the top class school. All these big, 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 big children. When my children go to school, we just give them food and water. When they go to this lesson, what they call um, what they call it, a summer class, they started seeing children coming to school with food, water, extra one thousand naira every day. That's when my children start demanding money from me. That's number one. Number two, they are not telling me. And this lesson they are going, this uh, summer class they are going, school fees is over a million naira. This other one, school fees is, you know, we can manage it. We can run them. This one, over a million. They, they are telling me that, Daddy, they want to go to this one. I say, sell me. S sell me. Google, sell me. Because... You see cars coming in, big cars. Even when you carry your car and one of the lights is missing, just don't park close to the school. Park far away and let them walk. Because the children will say, well, my, today my daddy brought me with a Range Rover. They say, my daddy brought me with, with um, a G-Wagon. And this one say, my daddy brought me with Coroque. <laughs> Coroque. You can imagine. So I noticed that their attitude character is already changing. No, I don't want ever. I want exos. Exos. I want sauce. Um, what do you call it? Barbecue chicken. Barbie what? So you notice if they grow in that atmosphere, they, it affects their character, not their temperament. Their temperament is permanent. Their character changes. Your character can change, but your temperament takes the grace of God. Are you learning this morning? You see, so you see the schools you go. Most of you, the reason why you are you are not the, you are not the, you are not that girl. The school you go to expose you to that girl. My secondary school is only God that help us. Ajayi Crowder. It was in the school I saw Lebe. You know what Lebe? 
Oh, I saw Lebe. Somebody brought Lebe. Second day school, Bruce carry Lebe to school. Put Lebe, the guy brought this thing shiny and said, Jesus. I disappeared. It was in school. School affects our character. So the child that went to, you know, to posh school, you can't expect that child to have the same character with the one that went to, you know, in the open Primary school. So some of you, we can't blame you. It's the school. You are thinking like the school you went to. You are acting like the, you are dressing like the school you went to. Is it the way Pastor Toby dressed? It's exactly the school she we went to. Even the uni life is the same way. Plenty and borrow. Yeah, what they go hooligans. So your character is also affected by your education. You can't expect the one who had BSc, postgraduate, masters, PhD, and the one who dropped out from school. Did they have the same attitude? Some, some of you will now see an Agbero on the road who never finished primary six or GSS three. You are not arguing with the person. Two of you who is actually mad. This guy is not learned. He didn't go to school. He didn't have knowledge. You know what school does is that school education form it brings the formation of your mind and formation of your brain. That's why when you graduate from school, they give you a certificate both in learning, in 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 character and in in learning. Character and learning it's meaning you learn and your character. It talks about what means that school is supposed to change your character, formation of your character. So you can see some people whose education is poor. You can't blame them. The guy you are thinking, why is the guy acting this way? Ask the guy, what is his level of his education? What school did he go to? What did he graduate from? What school? And in fact, not just education, the kind of school he went to. You went to Oxford, Cambridge. You went to good school, and then you came out and went to. Radbeji University, you want to compare yourself? It's not possible. School is school, I agree, but the level of exposure differs. So education matters. And then it, it affects characters. That's why you see somebody who some who go to school because all the guys in that school, they are posh, big guys from well-respected family. Some of them, they be spoiled children very very spoiled children so you see those children come spoiled come to school with all kinds of things and you send the child there the guy come back home the child comes back home and becomes spoiled because of the same school the child went to so school affects your character school the kind of friends you keep affect your characters if all your friends it was a man of God that says if they are five foolish friends that you didn't check well they're actually six because you are the six foolish person in the caliber of friends because it's only a foolish friend a foolish person that will keep so the kind of friends have you noticed that a time will come your friends will influence you to become what you are not his friends that influence people to start drinking his friends that influence people to get clubbing his friends that influence people to start partying. His friends that influence people. Check 80% of those who start taking marijuana is a friend. Test it. Do this. Try it. Feel among. This, that. Feel. His friends. You just get into the caliber of friends. All of them are, you know, drinking, smoking, all kinds of things. And then he said, I'm the good guy. See, the Yoruba has a proverb. It's easily for you to get distracted. The kind of friends you have. Your friends doesn't go to church. Say, I'm the only one that goes to church. Very soon they will discourage you. They will bring you down. It's, your friend affects your character. Have you a nice person, kind person, or you're the type that you don't gossip, you don't jealous, you don't do things about people, you don't talk about people. But all your friends, when you come into their class, they just they jealous, they gossip people, they talk about people, and you find yourself in that category. Very soon you will gossip. Very soon you will jealous. No man, you can't escape it. Or what keeps you away or what helps you is if you come out of that friendship. Another thing you'll be shocked about this. Another thing that affects your, your character is the kind of pastor that pastors you. Is the kind of pastor you have. Um, the, what I mean, the kind of pastor is that there are times that 
there are pastors let me release you thank you there are pastors that they don't see good in people it's always bad they don't see the good side of people if i've seen some pastors who you do very well and the pastor will look at it it's not because he wants to help you but he's threatened by your gifts threatened by your potential and he's not willing and ready to assist you to grow so you grow in that atmosphere you also grow with that spirit if you become a leader or a pastor of a church you will be threatened by other people because of the pastor that pastors you it affects your character that's a, some churches you go to instead of you to love more you hate more there are churches you go to there are churches you go to if all the pastor comes on the altar to do is to run down the pastors run down the pastor that pastor is not preaching well this one is not saying the man of god this one is not saying the will of god this one is preaching rubbish this one if you listen to that kind of sermon for three months you will notice that you as a person you will be using your own life or your words to run down other people at work in your house in your environment the kind of a pastor that pastor, also the kind of church you go affect your character the church the church affects your character. When you get to the church, you no, know, everywhere is hostile. People are hostile to people. People don't like one another. Somebody is, you know, is just feeling choky up, choky up. There's no space for growth, no space for development. What you are hearing is not helping you. What the, you are not hearing the truth. You are not hearing the someone is not balanced. Now there's something called balanced salmon. Balanced salmon, someone must not only be all about power. Someone must only be all about healing. Someone must only be all about prosperity. If all I teach you is prosperity, prosperity, get rich, get rich, from January to December, you can be rich. But the question is that at what expense? It can be rich at any cost. You become a billionaire, you become a billionaire, and that's what I keep prophesying about you. You will notice that at a time, you can even still to become rich. And if I come here and all I teach you is holiness, 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 without holiness, no man see the Lord, then you become very holy. Holier than thou, and you die in poverty. Holy, but yet you don't keep friends. Holy, and yet so holy that you won't even be able to pick ants in your room. You will see it sacred. So gospel must be balanced. And the church you go must be the balance of the gospel. The community, the environment you grow up. I told you the environment. You grow in Bariga and you allow the spirit of Bariga lives in you. It affects your mentality. You grow in Makoko, it affects your mentality. You grow in Ohoro. You grow in Lekki. You can imagine some of you will take you now from Bariga and will put you in Banana Island for one month your mindset changes is it true sometimes when you come here you can say i can stay here hey see some people came here one time from somewhere and they said i should run jen and put ac i said they should give them farm to blow themselves not on or they should give them ham farm you, because this is bariga so the environment you grow up affect your character the community, your background affects your character. Uh, that's uh, where the family comes in. And then finally, the ultimate character changer is the word of God. That's why the Bible talks about in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Do not be conformed, be transformed by the reign of your mind. That the word of God brings transformation. So the word of God has to shape us. So the word of God can shape your character. The word of God can trim your character adjust your character even though you've been tutored and trained by a wrong parent you've been tutored and trained by wrong background you've been tutored and trained by you know probably wrong church wrong ministry you've been tutored and trained by um, wrong friends you've been tutored and trained by you know wrong association once your heart is exposed to the word of god it trims them this is where the word of god comes so the word of god is like a balloon you know you you can you know inflate a balloon like five so this one balloon number one has a negative character by parents 
this one has a negative character by friends. This one has a negative character because of the school you went to. This one has a negative character because of the association that you have. This one has a negative character because of the church we've been exposed to. So when the word of God comes in, it comes like a pin. It bust number one, bust number two, bust number three. It deflects those negative characters in you and package you, rebrand you, to be able to become a far better person than who you should be. This is what the word of God does. And that's why the Bible said the word of God is quicker, sharper, and powerful. That every tools a just word be I seen asunder to the souls and of marrows and of joint and of marrows. And the Bible said the word of God pierced through the soul and it divided, it, cleanse it, and purge it. This is what the word of God does in your life so character is different from temperament there are four kinds of temperament in every being so i'll lay a foundation in a few minutes four kinds uh, the scripture background for this is proverbs chapter 30 in verse 11 to 14 Proverbs 30, verse 11 to 14. Different four kinds of temperament that are trapped in the soul. Four types. The first is melancholy. Melancholy. The second is called the phlegmatic. The third is called the sanguine. And the fourth is called the choleric. Melancholy, write it down. The sang phlegmatic, the sangue, and the choleric. All right. So, Pastor Sir, what has these four temperaments got to do with me? Pastor Sir, how can these four things affect my life? I don't need to know anything about them. All I need to know is the word of God. Once I know the word of God, I'm okay. Pastor Sir, I don't must I learn them? Five things that will happen in your life if you don't know your temperament. I'll look at that. Number one, five reasons why you need to know your temperament. Number one, it shows you the kind of a person that you are. After knowing God, the next thing you need to know is yourself. Even before you know the devil. Most of us know God. We know the devil. But we don't know ourselves. Why must I know myself? Because if you don't know yourself, you will take another identity. I need to know what kind of temperament am I. I know to know myself. If I know myself, I know my strengths. I know what I can do. I know my weakness. I know what I cannot do. I can do all this work that Christ that strengthens me. That is in Christ. I should know my strength. I should know my kind of a person. For some of you here, you don't even know yourself. So number two, why must you know your temperament? Know it so that when you know yourself, you can know who you can easily relate with and who you cannot relate with. The truth is, you can't relate with everybody. Why you have problem? Because you want to relate with everybody. You see, this choir, as it is now, is a group. The fact that you are in this choir still doesn't mean that you understand everybody. There are people you can't understand them. Because while you're trying to understand them in this point, they show you another color. When you think you've understand, especially married people, and that's why you must know this, especially for married people. Because in marriage, you can't know your partner. Married people, you can't know all of your partner. So why you think, ah, I thought this guy today is a happy person. Then the next day, he becomes sad. He said, but yesterday, I saw you to be an happy person. What the, you, you now became sad? No, sir. It's, it's his temperament. You need to know it. So when you know the temperament, you can say, oh, I know who you are. I know you are a sanguine. I know you are a choleric. I know you are phlegmatic. So you must know who you are and who you can easily relate with who you can easily relate with can now tell you who you can compact yourself with that is who you can marry because some marriages break 
not because the couples don't like themselves but because they are not compatible so marriages break not because the devil want to destroy that marriage because the couples are not compact there's no compatibility and most times when you allow love cover the face love in that's the true color so you see the lady for instance you are in a relationship and every time you go for meeting the lady is always going late always coming late always coming late but because there's love is uh, don't worry don't worry when you manage to change it will not change are you getting what i'm saying it will not change maybe this guy is always telling like he's not truthful or he's always laid back always lay back on things or procrastinate things you call the guy have you done this the guy said i will do it i will do it i will do it and you know as a lady the, your guy is always procrastinating things it's not devil that causes the procrastination is the person's temperament so what love does is that love covers it you know the bible says love covers much of sin so you see this person's weakness it's of you to now address it and know if you are compatible with it you say no i love him i love her then you come until you now marry until you marry the person makes you miss your flight the person makes you miss important appointment that will have changed your life it's a contract that will have changed your life and this guy is to drive you there and it's not delayed you miss the contract one billion will you forgive but you know it didn't start at that it actually started from the days you were covered by love you allow love cover the face you allow love cover and not just relationship it affects not just marriage relationship it affects every other relationship so you must know the temperament it helps you know who you can easily relate to number two know your temperament because it makes you it makes you easily forgive people so if you know that this person is a sanguine or is a choleric now i'll give you few of those things just lay a foundation for the second service if you know this person is a choleric person now the choleric kind of people are those who are never emotional cholerics are never emotional they are passionate choleric people are passionate they are never emotional and they are strong-willed so you see the guy say i will do it i will do it i will do it i will do it and you know this is the kind of a person that he, the person is is not passionate is not emotional he's a strong will person he's the kind of a person that in the midst of tears people are crying the guy is just there strong face you you not look at him and say you're not even emotional you're not even emotional you're not even emotional i break relationship he is a choleric that is template that is his temperament it's not wicked so we now see those things as wickedness so that things that you think are wickedness that things you think are evil they are actually templates of a person's temperament but that can be worked upon by the holy spirit can you lift up your hands to heaven say in the name of jesus say i am not a slave to my temperament can i hear your voice louder say i am not a slave to my temperament rather i have the spirit of god in me that will help me control and bring my temperament under my control amen low your temperament so that he can help you forgive so you know this guy he doesn't remember birthdays there are template there are temperament that don't remember birthdays there are temperament that remembers birthdays you hear all those in the second service those who can remember birthday those who cannot don't think it's everybody that will remember i know somebody who will always keep everybody's birthday in mind he doesn't miss it or she doesn't miss it and then you think this guy doesn't remember your birthday is evil no you just oh i remember that's your temperament so you will not you can forgive the person easily there are times you say i will never forgive you i will never forgive you because you forgot my birthday please what temperament is the guy so once you remember okay oh i remember all right you know what you can improve it and you can walk upon it that's what the holy spirit helps you to do improve your temperament and work on them knowing your temperament helps you to also know accept people and easily flow with them so you accept people 
and you easily relate with them. Oh, I accept you for you are under marriage teaching. They will teach you for those who will get married. There's a teaching called acceptance. In acceptance, what they teach you is that come to understand that this person that married, this is the way he is. Do you agree? Yes. If you don't leave, if you don't learn acceptance, you won't progress in counseling, especially in PICC. We must make you accept this person, this guy, this lady. Do you accept that this guy talks too much? Yes. Do you know she talks too much? Yes. Do you know he talks too much? Yes. Do you accept it like that? Mm. Do you know this guy is so aggressive? Yes. Do you accept it like that? Mm. So most times we know, but we allow love, accept the person. So acceptance in marriage is that this person you want to marry, do you accept that this person's attitude and character is okay by you? You say yes. We say sign. We give you a document. Oh. You sign. Say I. Call your name. Accept. Do accept. And affirm that this person I am dating is aggressive. And accept it like that. You sign. So that the day you are married will bring the paper to you and make you realize that you accepted it. It's not that you entered to marry and I said, I didn't know you had this kind of a person. No. I didn't know, but you knew it was the person was like that. So this is where acceptance comes in. Under the temperament too, you know that there are people who has a temperament of they are reformative, some are helpers, some are achievers, some are individualistic, they can do it by themselves. This four temperament is captured by this. They are individualistic. Some are investigators. They are always pumping to people's matters. Some are loyalists. Oh my God, when you have those loyalists, they stick with you forever. Some are challengers. They want to challenge you. They want to challenge themselves. Some are peacemakers under these four categories, which we call the melancholy, phlegmatic, sanguine, and choleric. Melancholy, phlegmatic, so let me just give you a little of it and then we'll close the service. For melancholy, just background, is the second service you hear the full, very full. So for who are the melancholic people? Melancholic people are those who are very analytic. They are the ones who say, let's look at it like this. Hey, let's analyze things. They will see that. He said, no, no analysis. Let's go. He says, no. By the geometric equation of the arithmetic equation, they want to analyze everything. They are the ones that will carry the pool to measure yam. Are you following me? They want to analyze yam. They will measure it. Then the lady is saying, we don't need to measure. The guy is a melancholy. Let him analyze it. They are the one, they are very reserved. The very, very reserved people. They are introspective. They think thoughts. They are deep thinkers. Because they are not analytic. They are very, very deep. They, are, they don't jump into things. They don't jump into people's affairs. Very easy, very, very, very um, introspective people. And they are very, very reserved people. When you see them, they're just, just going on their own. They won't look for our trouble. But if you look for their trouble, they will show you paper. Very reserved. If you don't call them to your team, they will not come. If you don't invite them, they, they will not bother. They are very, just like that. Very reserved people. We have the second type we call the phlegmatic. Like I said, introduction. The phlegmatic are very calm, very, very balanced, and very diplomatic. The phlegmatic people are the kind of people who they will not take leadership responsibility. No matter how you shout, take a leadership, take a leadership, they'll just be looking at you. But when you make them the leader, they will perform. Who knows an example, somebody like that? In PICC. They will not take. They will just be there. But give them responsibility. They will deliver. They are very calm. And they are very balanced. They are very diplomatic. They are the ones who will. They will not want to offend you with words. They will insult you with respect. They will insult you with, with dignity and respect. They are insulting you but with smile. And you will receive the insult without knowing that they are insulting you. The sanguine, the sanguine are social people, very social, optimistic. It's the sanguine person that will tell you, 
Don't worry. I will buy aircraft next tomorrow. I will buy it. And you tell the person, do you have the money? He said, don't worry. God will supply. God will supply. Very optimistic. Tomorrow will be better. My future is beautiful. Even though they don't have money in their pockets. Very optimistic about life. They are very social. And they are the, light, they are very, they are the ones that make friends. They go to parties. They are friends. They don't need to come to you. They don't, you don't need to come to them. They come to you. Can you be my friend? Can I be around you? They are very, that's the sanguine kind of people. Very social kind of people. Very social. And um, they are very impulsive. And then the cholerics are the ones that are the strong willed. Quickly, let me give you a few examples of a lady who is a choleric. A choleric lady is a type that commands and tells everybody what to do. Go here, go here, sit down, sit down. Very, very commanding. They are the action type. A choleric lady is aggressive, domineering. She, other ladies used to gossip about her. Say, hey, look at her. Is she the only one there? They are the ones that will get there now and think they take everything to be their own. You think this is this person? Why is she putting it on her head? She's a choleric lady. Other ladies judge her and they want to reduce her to their size. She's courageous. She's determined. She can do anything she wants to do. She's independent. A choleric lady may not need a man to support her. A colored lady doesn't need a man. She'll do it by herself. They are the, all these what we call independent woman. Independent woman. We call them the boss lady. Someone shout boss lady. Independent woman. Uh, a colored woman lady is the one that always for change. They are the one always calling for all this injustice, justice for this, justice for that. When you see a lady like that at the end of advocating, advocating for a change, they are called choleric. She's productive, hardworking, and many of the collect ladies are highly successful business ladies. The collect are the business ladies, very successful ladies, very, very successful. When you see it, they are the ones who are heads of organizations, bank industries, and all those ladies who top organizations, they are choleric in nature. They are ex ex very ex excessive disciplinary. When you see a collect lady discipline the children, the father will be begging. Very disciplinary. They have great ideas and um, they don't like listening to people. They don't listen to people because they believe in themselves and they have a bad manner of presentation. When you see that, you say, You are not man, you don't have man. He's a choleric, she's a choleric lady. The weakness of a choleric lady is that they are very self centered, very jealous kind of people. Very self centered. It's just about themselves. They don't think about you. You can be with them, but they don't they don't send you. Whether you're eating, you're not eating, sometimes they are very self-centered. They are work only. They can work till they die. Everybody who close, they will still be working. Everybody say, Are you not going home? Say, no, it is when you close. That's when they start their own work. Like literally their boss lady. She talks rudy, shady. She has a sharp tongue. Sometimes they tell you one word, you can go and kill yourself. They have all temper. And um, most times the colored lady is not always loved by male male figure the, she because she likes to dominate men wherever she is there are men that she wants to control them so guys don't like ladies who controls them so because of that she's not always been loved by men always been accepted by men because of that she likes to dominate so these are the colleagues so in the second service we are going to learn one of the things i hope you can do for me you can wait for second service if you can you need to get your book we are going to write out some of you will write out those four characteristics and then you want to know what you are at the end of today you must know what kind of temperament you are and then we will now do what we call temperament uh peering which temperament can peer with this temperament if a choleric man marries a choleric lady the marriage will break do you agree because a hot temper man marries a hot and so you know god knows how to peer people that is why they say, don't marry who you love. No. Marry who you need. Who God gives you, not who you love. Because you can marry a lady who you love, you love her. But she's not the kind of a person that can work for you. So God knows how to peer people. That's why you see the guy is aggressive, but the lady is cool. The guy is cool, but the lady is aggressive. 
and then you are wondering why is your wife controlling? We have a guy in this church, time is up, a guy in this church who got married some two years ago, and we say, Why do you like this lady? The guy shocked me. The guy said something. He said, Pastor, I'm a very cool and calm person. Very cool. So, because of that, people used to use my head. So, therefore, this lady can fight for me. And if you see the lady, very tiny lady like that, say, The lady fight for me. So, most times, anytime they want to cheat the guy, the lady will stand up. And, and the guy is big, tall, fat. The lady is tiny. As tiny as she is, she's fire. She's the one that fight for the guy. Because of that, he said, I will marry this one. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Lift your hands to heaven, everybody. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit this morning. Why finance the Holy Ghost? Give me the grace to bring my temperament under the control of the Holy Spirit. Can you lift your hands up? Be intentional one minute. Say, Holy Ghost, grace to bring my temperament under the control of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And it has the Holy Ghost to also give you grace to be able to listen to the second service sermon so that you can now know fully what your temperament is and how you can peer the temperament. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Please let's give our tithe quickly. If you have your tithe, let's come out. All titers, come out quickly. Titus, come out. Titus, um, while we package our tithe, we also give our offerings. Just if you have any tithe, you can come out quickly. We'll give our offerings quickly. Um, raise up the offerings above your head, your hands up. Where they are tithers, you can come out. There are offerings. Lift up your hands as we pray. All right, Titus, lift up your hands and say, Father, this is my tithe. As I honor you with my tithe, I declare open doors, blessings, favor, abundance in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Please drop your tithe. Lift up your offerings, Father, in the name of Jesus. Our hands are up. I declare blessings upon these hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Please listen to a few announcements as we we'll, um, bring the service to a close. Something special is going to happen this coming Tuesday. Let all our widows be around. Um, Pastor Ruth, we have some gifts for them. And uh, it's going to be an awesome time. Let's be here on Tuesday. This coming Wednesday is going to be a special service for a continuation of the teaching and emotions. And it's going to be an awesome time. And by the grace of God, this coming Saturday, we know it's a big Saturday. The big day, our own very own Pastor Dave, Pastor Flo, they will be tired. Necessary things are in place. Please, if you don't have the aim, can you re reach out to the resident pastor so that they can get you the aims? Hallelujah. Something big is coming this coming. I didn't say Pastor Polinice is coming here. <laughs> All right. Okay, so Pastor Polinice is coming to Lagos to have something on the island. The regional, regional pastor for the Lagos West. Um, I don't know if you know the Dunamis at Charlie Boy. Yes, the pastor, Pastor Fidelis, is the regional for the whole of Lagos West, but now he's been promoted to become the regional for the whole of North Central, the whole of Benway, North Central. Um, by the grace of God, Pastor Fidelis and his wife will be here Sunday morning. I thought you were going to clap your hands. Yes, because in the evening, we are going to receive Pastor Paul Ineche somewhere on the island for a dedication. So Pastor Fidelis is going to be worshiping with us and ministering to us. And the team is free indeed. Some shall free indeed. Please, I beg you. I, I'm sure I know you will, you will be here for second service. So even if you are coming for set, first service, prepare yourself. I will have made it combined. But because 
uh, we don't want to affect the service. So we still have our first service, but prepare yourself that you also attend second service. So first service is going to be miracle service, prayer, prophetic, but the second service is going to be explosive. That man of God is, is one of the biggest pastors that Dunamis ever had. And he said he's going to be right here with us. And everybody should prepare. I know it's also a casual service. So all our welcome team, in fact, after service, second service, I want to quickly have an emergency meeting with all our workers. All workers, I beg, if you can return back, wait behind. So I can address you on the way we should receive this man of God. He's a very big, very, very big man of God coming to visit us and coming to be a blessing to us. Don't miss that service. The graphic is going to be out. Share it and then invite your friends. Let's invite every... We should have an overflow. We should have a canopy outside. If you all can take that graphics and share and keep sharing and invite your friends, because of time, we cannot start producing banners and publicities. But I believe that the best publicity is the one you send to people online. So just take it and share. Invite everybody in your area, everybody you can talk to, everybody.